Misschien iets anders dan het eerste deel van dit concert. Maar wij hebben besloten vandaag op blind date te gaan. Dus we hebben alleen koffie gedronken. We hebben elkaar op uh, Grinder leren kennen vanmiddag. En uh, dit is de eerste keer dat we elkaar in het echt zien. En we hebben ook apart van elkaar gesoundcheckt. Dus we weten niet wat we mee hebben genomen aan instrumenten. Ik weet dat hij Romain Blie heet, dat hij Horn speelt. Dat hebben ze mij verteld. Dus ja, dit is, uh, je, ik ben een beetje teleurgesteld, als u zult begrijpen, dat dat uh, heel anders gaat vandaag. 
Um, het eerste stuk um, wat we speelden, en daarom kondig ik het ook aan, was van het Romain Blie duo. We hadden afgesproken, als het Romain Blie duo speelt, dan doe ik de aankondigingen. Nu gaan we een stuk doen met het Martin Fonsen duo. Daarna zal Romain daar iets over vertellen. Deel 2 van de Not So Blind Date Anymore, but still kind of blind, blind right? Half-blind, one-eyed king. Thank you. 
So the deal is when it's Romain Bleduo, he talks. And when it's Martin Fonsa, I talk. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, total improv. That's uh, fun. Um, I didn't know what would happen, so I brought all I had at home. <laughs> <coughs> I realize now it's way too much. And very heavy by train also to, to bring all that. Uh, do we have time for a third one? Yes, we do? OK. Voila. That's the music, uh, the music talk.
Romain Bly en Martin Fonsen. Kom zitten, kom zitten. Oké, okay, gentlemen, kom on over. Uh, there's a drink coming up for you. Uh, I think so. And um, Martin is uh, going to get something. So, Romain, uh, you play the trumpet, but not with a mouthpiece. Is that, am I correct? Yes, you're correct, yeah, yeah. Uh, We have a camera, so if you can sit here, then it's best for the people at home, yeah. Here comes a drink from Paul. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And what have you bestelled? Een rode wijn. And nog een voorkeur voor een druif? Uh, de primitivo, natuurlijk. Oké, okay, primitivo. Um, So, did you forget the mouthpiece, or what happened? No, no, I, I have it somewhere. Um, it's um, it's just very great great way to, to make the trumpet sound like a complete different instrument, more yeah. like a, a nai or maybe even like a baroque uh, cornetto, um, which is kind of the same technique. Like you don't really buzz in it; you just mm -hmm. blow. And um, it's uh, sometimes the trumpet can be a bit tense. You know, you have to really. Yeah. Bite, and I find this way of playing so much more uh, relaxed and uh, all based yeah. on the air. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. that's yeah. what I like to do. Yeah, yeah it sounds wonderful. So uh, there's a, there's a trumpet and there's the French horn. Um, what came first? Trumpet came first. Uh, played classical trumpet for for. Uh, about uh, maybe 15 years until I was 20 and then I started playing in symphonic orchestras and I was playing second trumpets in uh, Beethoven Pastoral and there is really seriously one note in the storm <laughs> and uh, if you miss that note uh, you miss your gig <laughs> and I was seeing the two French horn players having so much fun uh, playing and I thought okay if I play the the, the further classical music, I need to choose an instrument that's just a bit more fun to play. Uh, okay. So that came the French horn. And then I realized, well, it's actually uh, much more difficult than <laughs> playing the trumpet. I have a love-hate relationship with that, uh, that guy there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why you see I beat him up and then I put some, uh, some uh, tape on it. <laughs> yeah, the tape is like normally people are exercising in their hood, but this is for the muscles of the... So is it really is it there a leak behind it, or is it just for to to uh, forget a grip? It's uh, the the official uh, very technical response is uh, the my horn is not lacquered and I have a very acid uh, sweat, uh -huh. and so it uh, it gets the metal gets thinner yeah. and uh, it's kind of an old horn, so it gets okay. a bit. Uh, so now I'm just uh, yeah, fixing it. Uh, Martin, you are a composer of the motherland. In English, it's motherland. Composer as Farlands, no? No, it's, it's a composer laureate. Composer laureate. It's different. So uh, I can be of any country, actually. Okay. okay. If, if, um, so you write music when there is an occasion that asks for it. So the last piece you played, what kind of occasion would have been that for you as a composer of the motherland? I say motherland. Which is still wrong, but okay. <laughs> I understand, I still understand your question. Yeah. Um, this was uh, composed not only by me, also by Romain Bly, and it was because we have this blind date and we had this relationship of three pieces. So this is the third piece where we celebrate uh, the, pe the, the, the way that we could perform here, just starting with really nothing, or he composes a little bit, you see from his one note from Beethoven. It will not happen again to him, um, which is great, I think. So it was really a big surprise that, um, that there was a lot of things in front of me because I was really expecting that he would play the French horn. Yeah. I know him a bit from other bands, but still, uh, I think for a first date, he brought a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I hope that there is, in our relationship, still more to discover. But let's see. Um, no, so, um, yeah, you know what I, what I said? It was really about this occasion. Yeah. Because it was improvised, and if there's a one, um, one element of music that is really wonderful for the occasion, that's improvisation, because right. it's only now. Yeah. It doesn't, ex doesn't exist anymore. You, uh, you're, the, uh, you're the one who was picked by the uh, program of the BMS to choose a partner. Mm -hmm. um, 
why did you go on Grindr to, to, look, to look for a musician? Or I can also ask, where did you find uh, Romain? You know, as a composer, you can sometimes use humor as a compositional device. Yeah. I learned this from my teachers. Mm. One of my teachers is a nice, nice sideline. He wrote a piece for uh, bass tuba and piccolo, which is already very funny in certain, certain fields of music. Yeah. You know, you have this huge tuba and a small piccolo. It's yeah. super funny. Mm. And then in bar 235, he said to us, did you hear? Did you hear? And we said, no, what happened? The, low, the lowest note of the piccolo was higher than the highest note of the tuba. <laughs> so since then I use humor as a compositional device. Yeah. So I didn't go on Grindr, I don't have an account yet. Okay. So, yeah. ah, okay. But in, in times of gender fluidity, it's p even for me <laughs> possible to, to, to do that. No, because uh, when uh, Frank asked me to, to find somebody to play with, um, yeah, it's always nice to choose people that will surprise you, that you think at least, because I know him from other bands, and there is always a certain amount of uh, an expectation and surprise in his playing, in his, yeah, what he brought in instruments. Yeah. And I thought it would be a very nice uh, challenge to, to cope with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Romain, there was like one horn you didn't play, am I correct? I, yeah, I think I did played a few notes at the beginning, I think, yeah. Oh yeah, on the on the okay, you did okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. Okay, I see. Okay, now then that was the last question. Then then it's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> then it's time for intermission, dames and heren. Romain Bly and Martin Fonse. <laughs> okay. See you in the bar, and we'll see you soon here.